Hi, good evening. Kabod Haraf, how are you? Okay, thank you. Baruch Hashem. All right, let's get started. Hello, Rabbi. How are you doing? Hashem, how are you? Okay, how was the holiday? Hashem, I'm good. Beautiful. Okay. Here we go. So we're doing Tet. It says, Katav Rambam. Says it too like this. Katav Rambam. Says the Rambam. Hamista Er, Shem Daton Lechona. A person who's in agony, whatever, some kind of pain, suffering, and he can't concentrate. So it says, Patur, Mehem, is Patur, he's absolved from Tivinin. Because he can't really concentrate on it. He shouldn't divert his mind from them. <clears throat> okay, that's the that's the tour. So it says a bit to Yosef regarding that. Katav Rambam is there. It says over there, Peg Dalit. It's over there, Peg Dalit. Halacha Yud Gimel. Vezele Shano. That's the language of the Rambam. It's the air. Misha Eno Datom Yushev Dalav. A person who's in agony or that can't concentrate. Benechona Alav Patur Minat Tefillin. He's absolved from Tefillin. Shemaniak Tefillin Asul Leasiach Datomem. Why is that? Because a person who puts Tefillin is not allowed to divert his mind from it. Even though regarding other mitzvot we say that a person who has agony, whatever, he should try to concentrate. But here is different because when it comes to tefillin, you're not allowed to divert your mind from it. So this is a very tall order. You know, it's hard to do that. So if a person is really like you know spacing out, can't concentrate. He's absolved for that reason. That's what he's saying. Okay. Uh, so let's see Shukhanuch. <clears throat> so Shukhanuch says, Mr. Er, Person who's in agony, pain, whatever it is, uh, suffering, Umisha and Datum Yushavadala. Also, can I can't concentrate? Patur Mipnes, he's absolved from Tfinin. Mipnes, she asul le asiach Datumen, because he's not allowed to divert his mind from it. Okay, so you gotta be careful with that. A lot of people, by the way, unfortunately, are not careful with this halacha. And they don't even know, they don't even know this halacha. And it's considered to be something really, uh, Fundamental, so it's unfortunate, you know, that people don't really, <laughs> they're not aware of, of this the whole concept. It's very difficult to keep very you difficult, yeah. concentrated for a long time for the whole uh, right. Right. That's why, you know, the halakha says that you have to keep touching, the, groping the feeling in order to remind you that you have it on. Right. This is the way, you, this is the way that you can... Continue to, to to not divert your attention from it, Rabbi. Just inappropriate thoughts are not allowed, right? But if yeah, you talk about that if yesterday, you inappropriate mind, thoughts. Yes. If you if your mind goes on about I don't know work or, or uh, something yeah. else, it, it, 
it's not a, it's not that bad, right? <laughs> no, the truth is that a person, you know, in the old days, they used to work with tefillin. You know what I mean? So that's not really the problem. The problem is that what, what I mean to say when you're diverting your mind, it means that you're not thinking that you have the tefillin on. You forgot that you have it on. That's what it means, you know? Mm -hmm. I see. When, you, when, you're, when you're already that far gone, if you don't remember it's on you, uh, then you got a problem already. Right. right, but it doesn't mean you can't think about uh, you know things. You know, there's some things that uh, you want to occupy yourself with. That's not what it means. Mm -hmm. As long as they're they're kosher thoughts, basically. Oh uh, right. yeah, I mean, if we're talking about as we said right yesterday, we talked about the issue of sexual thoughts. You know, so those things you're not allowed to have them when you're wearing tefillin. So therefore, right, uh, you got to be careful with that. Make sure that. Um, and if a person is having those problems, you should take it off right away, right? Uh, unless you can solve the problem, you know, whatever, by doing something, learning Torah, whatever it is. All right. Okay, yeah, that's the story. A person in general, you know, who has this kind of problem, you should put the tefillin on for, for a very limited amount of time, just for Kriyat Shema and Tefillah, and then take it off, and that's it, you know? If he has these issues. Usually we're talking about, you know, uh, single people, you know, who, who are not married. They have these problems. Right. Yeah, that's the issue, yeah. Yeah, it's more difficult for them. Of course, absolutely. Okay, so that's the story. Uh, okay, let's go on. <clears throat> Yud. I think it dropped down. So it says like this, Garcina de Mechilta. It says in Mechilta, uh, this is like a Midrash. It says, there's a canon, Ben Enecha. It says, it should be a remembrance between your eyes. Mikanamu, from here they said, from this Pasuk, they said, Hamaniach Tvinin Kekore Betora. Uh, I think there's a tour about this also. We'll do a tour. Yeah. It says, Garcinan, the Mechilta, the Zikaron, Ben and Echa, Mikanamu, from here they said, A maniac Trinin, Kakoreba Torah. A person who here puts on Trinin is like reading the Torah, the Koreba Torah Patur, Minat Trinin. And the one who's reading the Torah is Patur from Trinin. Katab Rav Shmuel Bar Chofni, Leta Lehach Baraita. So it says, this rabbi says, this Baraita, we don't pass him like that. Tehar Abanan Keshishe, the Torah Tanu Manotan. Why? Because as we see the, the elder rabbis who are uh, very uh, pious people, whatever, right? Uh, very learned. Very, that Manichim Tfilin Um Barachin Alen, what they do is they uh, put Tfilin, they bless on it. The El Lab De Chobahu. If it wasn't for the fact that it's an obligation, they wouldn't bless on it. So you know what he's trying to say over here? He's trying to say like this, right? That the first opinion, what did it say? It said that a person who's learning Torah, he doesn't need feeling. Because that already is holiness, you know, enough. Without feeling, you don't need it. So it comes this rabbi and says, no, 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 I'm sorry, but I saw, you know, the big hachamim that are learning Torah all day, and anyway, they're putting tefillin and blessing on it. Right? So you see from there that uh, you still have, have a mitzvah tefillin when you're learning as well. Right? Other rabbi, the truth is, you know, that uh, there is a mitzvah actually, right? A person should try to do this every day if he can. Uh, when he puts tefillin, you know, to learn a little bit with the tefillin. You know, after, after the prayers, you know, learn something a little bit. That's why the custom is, you know, in many shuls that uh, after the shachrit, 
they do some halachot, you know. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we do that. So the person should be able to learn with tefillin a little bit. Whatever, okay, so anyway, right? Bala Yitur Katab Vistaba Alam Dekore Batorah Kamar. So he says, it's it's logical to say that talking about when it's learning Torah, he's reading the Torah, Robert Talmud. Ah. So he says he's talking about somebody who's reading the Torah, not, not somebody who's studying Torah. And he says they're talk, they're learning Gemara, that's something else. In other words, one doesn't contradict the other, there's no contradiction. But we said that a person who's reading the Torah is patur from Tvinim, but talking about he's reading the Sefer Torah. Like reading the Chumash, whatever it is, right? But a person who's studying Talmud, you know, Torah Shabbat Peh, he's not patur from Tvinim. That's how he answers the question. The end here lead the chalek. The so it says, it says Maran, I don't agree with this to make this kind of differentiation. To have any brachot of Torah, because it says when it comes to brachot of the Torah, Kama, he, taught, he said this regarding that per Kama the brachot, the first uh, per of brachot, to eat lehu chad dina. It's the same thing. In other words, when it comes to halacha, uh, reading the Torah and re- learning Talmud is the same halacha. What does that mean? You still have to do brachot bichat Torah for both of them. So it says, Amar Abba, Asur lemichlat tzfilin kameh rabbeh. Oh, another interesting thing is, right, that uh, you're not allowed to remove your tzfilin in front of your rabbi. Right? Dikhtiv, Vayarom yad memelech v'amar Rabbi Yochanan shechalat tzfilin lefanav. Right, so this is what Yerobam ben Nevat did to Shlomo Melech. He took off his tulin in front of him to show him disrespect. So you see from there that you're not allowed to do that. Uh, so he says, um, Umayta kante. So then, how do you fix this problem? Right? Lichroch rabbe beresha. Vihadar karche. Talmidim. Amar. So it tells you how to fix up this issue. We'll see what that means. <laughs> so Rava says, the only person who should uh, put Torah, as I'm sorry, put Tfilin, at least he, he reads Torah and Nevi'im Ketuvim. At least he learns the Bible. He reads the Bible. You know, If he's not on that level, that he doesn't even read the Bible, what's the point of putting Tfilin? That's what he's trying to say. <laughs> what are we talking about? Genesis. Pasuk Echad ben Nevi'im. One verse in the, in the Prophets. B'may b'sefer al Shmuel. In the book of Shmuel. Pasuk Echad miktuvim. B'may. Which one do you miktuvim? B'sefer Tehilim and Tehilim. Pasuk Echad ben Talmud. Tamania. One Pasuk in Talmud. Okay. So, in other words... Let's just explain these things, right? Uh, so we understand what we're, what we're talking about. First of all, we said, right, that it's not proper, it's not proper, it's not allowed to take off your tefillin uh, in front of your rabbi. Right? And what's the reason for that, by the way? Um, the reason is because the the, the reason why Yerobam ben Nevat did this in front of Shlomo Melech was to display in front of him disrespect. Why? As if to say, like, well, you know, I can't, I can't wear tefillin when I'm in front of you because you're not a holy man, you know. In other words, uh, you're not, you're not holy enough. That I should be wearing tefillin. So it's like an insult, basically. You're insulting your rabbi like that. And uh, by the way, this is the reason. I remember one time, you know, um, when we were when we were in Israel, so we were praying with the Minyan Maran, Robadia. So what happened was that. Uh, we used to, as we as we already mentioned this a couple of times, what we did was after we did the Chazat Hashatz and then we did the Tachanun. Uh, so then we would stop the prayers for five minutes and put on Rabbeinu Tam. Switch over to Rabbeinu Tam. And uh, so what happened was that the rabbi, when he did this, he left the room. And he went into a different room. Uh, he didn't want to do this in front of us, this whole thing. So the truth is, you know, one time I remember uh, my friend, you know, who lives over here in Wigo Park, Daniel Lacoyen, you know, uh, my, my, my old Chavuta from, 
When we were younger, Rabbi Daniel, so what happened was that he was there at the rabbis, and I saw him there. So I saw him at the, at the rabbis, he came to visit there. So he asked me, he says, let me ask you a question, uh, Rabbi Daniel. He said, why does the rabbi go into a different room when he puts on uh, the tefillin of the Rabbi Hotam? Why can't he just do it over here? So then we figured it out, you know, like we had a discussion. So it must be because that we're not allowed to remove the tefillin in front of him. So therefore, if he would stay in that room, we would be disgracing him by removing our tefillin when he's there. So this is the reason why uh, <laughs> this is the reason why he, he went into a different room. In other words, to save us from 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 dis disrespecting him. You understand? So we figured it out. That was the whole that was the whole idea. You know. Uh, so yeah. So the rabbi was very thoughtful about these things. You know. Even this, he didn't want us to sin. You know, by taking off the tefillin in front of him. So he went into a different room. That's the way it was. Uh, okay, good. So uh, that's what we're talking about here. That you shouldn't do this in front of your rabbi. The truth is, today people, when they do this, that's not their intention. You know, to disgrace the rabbi. You know, they don't. That's not their intention. But anyway, you're not allowed to do it because you know, just that's the way it is. I mean, that's the nature of it. So if you know, if you know this halacha, right? Uh, you know it. If you don't know, you don't know. Okay, right? There are a lot of people who don't know this halacha, and they do it all the time. They do it like you know. It's a routine. They take off their tool in front of the rabbi. And they finish shachrit. Nobody, nobody puts, uh, put, puts their attention on that. Okay, so that's the story there. But the proper thing to do, as we see from the rabbi, Allah Shalman, that once the shachrit is over, and they're taking off the tefillin, the rabbi should walk out from, from, uh, from, the, from the room. Because otherwise, he's going to cause all people to sin over there. By taking off the <laughs> So you should leave the room and go somewhere else, whatever. Interesting. Okay, so uh, yeah, so that's the first thing we learned. And then the second thing was uh, that um, a person uh, should this is like sort not really halakha, you know, uh, but we don't pass them like this. But anyway, there's a lot of wisdom there here. In this, in this saying, which is that a person, you know, who doesn't learn any Torah whatsoever, uh, doesn't read even the Bible, you shouldn't put tefillin. In other words, he doesn't even deserve to put tefillin because he's so, you know, he's not attached to the Torah at all. So then, right, he asks over here, okay, so which pasuk should you do, right, from here, from there, all kinds of pasukim. So the truth is, Baruch Hashem, you know that when, when we pray with the tefillin, it's okay. Why? Because we're saying all kinds of psukim from Tehillim, from right, from uh, all kinds of places. So we are doing Divrei Torah with Tehillim, you know. So, uh, so it's not such a big problem uh, for us, you know. We're doing all kinds of things. We're reading the Ketoret. We're reading uh, right Asher Yosher Betecha and all the Tehillim and all kinds of things. Uh, okay, so. So then he asks, asks a question, right? He objects. So then he asks a question, right? That um, that a person who's 10 years old, he, can, he starts studying Bible. And 13 from Mitzvot. He, go, he becomes bar mitzvah. Amar Abaye says Abaye vehu diada le le targume bekulhu. So he says that also means that he knows how to uh, translate these things, these um, this Torah. So what does that mean? It's not enough just. It's not enough that he should read it. He has to also know what it means. Because otherwise, you know, what's the purpose of reading Torah if you don't understand anything? What's the, what's the purpose of that? Hayat tzarich letfilin mezuzah. He says if he needs a tefillin mezuzah, then he had doma siget, and he can't uh, uh, he can't uh, afford it. Right? It says the tour. Actually, this is already a different halacha. Let's go first to bet yourself and uh, figure out this halacha first before we go to the next one. Okay. So it says bet yourself. 
כל זה כתב הראש, so all this was written by the rosh, בסוף הלכות תפילין, אין דבר לא זאת תפילין, והוא, והד גרסינא במחילתא, now what you have is, במחילתא, כתבו תוספות, סדר תוספות, פרק כמה דה ראש השנה, מפרש פרק ראש השנה, גבי כפתא, זה לא מנח תפילין, right, that if a person doesn't put תפילין, right, so in other words, he's a sinner, right, as we already mentioned, it's very, it's very big sin not to put תפילין, he's considered to be a sinner in his body, וגם הרב הרבנו ניסים כתבה שם, he also wrote this, כתב, זה אפשר את תמה דה מילתא משום דה העוסק במצווה פטור מן המצווה, so it says could be the reason is because a person who's doing a mitzvah is patu from a dand a mitzvah. And I mean, alternatively, she has a Torah, and also like ot. The one who's reading the Torah, he doesn't need a sign anymore. The Torah is a sign. That's why when a person is learning Torah, he doesn't need feeling. She did read Torah hen alav, because the ot, because the sign of the Torah is upon him. The Amor Rechik Chata Be'erchot Tfinin, says Amor Rechim Vazav Tfinin, the Shema Mashi Aomer Bechita Shu Patu, that which it says, maybe maybe what it says in the Bechita is patu, hainu b'shad sheosek b'torah. That's only when he's learning Torah. V'rabbeinu Yonah katab, says Rabbeinu Yonah katab, v'perk haya kore, d'lo ba b'mechilta l'ftor sh'lo yenichem b'shad k'at shemal tfilah. It's not coming to tell you, the mechilta, that you shouldn't put tfilin when you're doing k'at shemal tfilah, prayers. Sh'zeh tzarich, you need that. Uh, in order to accept the yoke of heaven, right, uh, completely, completely. Ah, so he says, but a person who's learning Torah all day, he's a Tamil Chacham, he doesn't need to wear Tfilin all day. That's what he's trying to say. That's, that's, that's the whole point. Uh, for Kriyat Shaman Fila, he has to. But for the rest of the day, since he's just learning all day, he doesn't need tefillin, because he, he has the holiness of the Torah. Shepotel uh, l'mishya osek b'torah. Well, feed the Arab, shapir naktinam ki b'raita. So according to his words, then we call it the b'raita zo, deleta, veleta, lekushya de Rab Shmuel bar Chofni. And there's the question of this rabbi doesn't exist anymore. The rabbanan kishishe b'shat tefillin ahu, manched lehu, that the, the, the holy rabbis, when they were uh, at, um, when they were doing the, the time of the prayers, they were putting it in the It's not talking about that in Mechita. Diva Mordechi, uh, going to Mordechi, Usara Kama, from the first opinion, the Arab, the Rabbin Unisim, the Rabbin Unisim, Nami, Ate Shapir, comes out, everything comes out good. The Rabbanan, Keshishe, Lo Havon Boskin, Meli Mudam. So what does that mean? These, uh, these the holy rabbis were not stopping their learning, in order to put tefillin. They didn't have time for that, right? Uh, there was no purpose to put tefillin. Because they're learning Torah, they're too busy with Torah, you know? So what do you need tefillin for? Why? Because already by the time of tefillah, they put it. They put tefillin with the time of prayers. That's all they need. So what it's saying is that a person should um, not stop learning in order to put tefillin. It's like a bit Torah. But if you don't think that Lomar, maybe you can tell me that Rabbanan Kishishe have a paske milu onam. If these rabbis were stopping learning, kedel le'aniach tefillin, not to put tefillin, lo kashet, no difficulty. The mechil ta'amai re'e b'mi yishe Torah to umano to. The mechil ta'as talking about somebody who learns all day. He's like a tamit chacham. He's like an avrech, you know, learns all day. So if that's the case, kegon Rashbi, like Rashbi, have been learning all day. אבל מי שאין תורה תורה מנותו, אבל somebody who's not learning all day, כל כך, he's not that much learning all day. In other words, he's got also other things that he does. He, you know, he has a job, you know, all kinds of things, but he's not learning all day. Right, so, לא מפתר, then he's not, he's not absolved. כדאי איתה בפרק כמה זה שבת, זה קצת נפרס פרק שבת, וגם בירושלמי שהבאתי בסמוך, זה also ירושלמי שזה I brought, goes by, ועוד יש לומר, זה אפילו רבי שמעון בן יוחאי, זה אומר, אנחנו צריכים להגיד את זה, אפילו אם רבי שמעון בן יוחאי וחבריו, שהם לומדים כל כך, הם לא עושים כלום אחר כך ללמוד, אם רצו להניח תפילין, מברכים עליהם, אם הם רוצים להניח תפילין, הם מברכים עליהם. זה היה דפטיר, היינו, אם לא רצו להפסיק. כי זה מה שהם פתרו, שהם פתרו, זה רק אם הם לא רוצים להפסיק, הם רק רוצים להמשיך ללמוד. אבל אם הם באו להפסיק, ואם הם באו להפסיק, 
Chiyuvim Mechayev, they're still obligated in Balkin, and therefore they, 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 they bless them. The Rokiach Katab, the Siman Shin Samechtet, it says over there, Rokiach, Ala Mechilta, we're going to this Mishrash, then Omar Patu Mamash, it doesn't mean that his Patu is absolved, like really. Ela Marina Lab Kelu Shone Betora, but we, we consider him like he's learning Torah. All the more so if he's actually learning Torah, that is, um, right, his, his reward is greater, much greater. In other words, the, the, the reward for learning Torah is greater than tefillin. So Torah is more important than tefillin. That's what it is, right? That's what I'm trying to tell you. So therefore, if a person is like, once he already prayed, you know, in the morning, and he put tefillin, he doesn't, and he's learning all day, he doesn't need to put tefillin anymore. Right? He's, he's busy, was busy with the Torah. That which Rabbeinu said in the Rabbi Tur. Then I don't want to make this differentiation like that. Because when it comes to the blessings of Torah, Kama, they said so, it says over there in Brachot, there's the same thing. In other words, whether you're learning, reading the Sefer Torah or you're just learning Talmud, same halacha. So he says, we answer, a person who's learning Torah, Shabbat He's learning oral, he's learning the written Torah, the, the Bible. She needs by So over there it's mentioned that they going out of Egypt, right? To come up on him several times. So he remembers going out of Egypt because of the, he reads it in the Torah. He doesn't need to be reminded. There's a different reminder. But when it comes to learning Talmud, he's learning halachot and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Connected. Okay, we'll connect that again. We lost you for, for a minute. Right. Yeah, we lost you. All right, so as it says, um, says, nevertheless, bottom line, right? It says, it says, Maran. And the bed balay tuni in. We don't really pass like this. So uh, therefore, right, we 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 learn here some several things which are not really so much halacha. So let's see the shulchan how we pass things over there. Okay, so we're doing Shulchan Ruch Yud. It says, uh, a, Korea, a, Torah, a person who's reading the Torah, patu mina he doesn't have to wear tefillin all day. So in other words, a person who's learning all day, he's an Avrech, he's a Tamit Chacham, he doesn't have to wear tefillin all day. Even the, nowadays, anyway, we don't wear tefillin all day, so it doesn't, it's not really relevant. But Zulat Beshat Kiyat Shema Tefillah. The only other time he has to put to wear tefillin is a time of Kiyat Shema Tefillah. Otherwise, the prayers. Otherwise, he's, he's absolved. Why? Because the Torah is already enough, you know, as it is. He doesn't need any more than that. That's the idea. Anyway, today we don't put tefillin all day, so it's not really relevant. Okay, let's go on. Uh, so, said the two in the end. Let's see first what did this look like. We'll, we'll, we'll do the uh, bit yourself over here because we already read the tour here. So it says that uh, that which Rabbi said that you're not allowed to put take off your feeling in front of your rabbi 
עד, ועד הקרח תלמידי, ושימוש הרבה, אצל שימוש עם הרבה, ועד דאמר רבי יוחנן דה וירם יד במלך, היינו שחלץ תפילין, right, so as we said, right, the Yorovan בן לבת, if you know the story over there, in the book of kings, right, that he came to Shlomo Melech, and he took off a stool in front of him to disgrace him, because he was mad at him about something that he did, so what happened was that, uh, From there we learned that you're not allowed to take off your tefillin in front of your rabbi. Um, Ita Perk Kelek, this is also brought down in the Perk Kelek, in Sanhedrin, Kuf Alf, Kuf Alf, Abu Nebet, Katvo Rambam, it says the Rambam, Perk Kelek, Mi'ilchot Talmud Torah, and laws of Talmud Torah, Rabbeinu Batur Yodeh, also the tool brings it down, סימן ריש מ"ב, ופרש רש"י, רש"י אקספליינס, שהיה לו לפנות צד אחר מפני אימת מלכות. So, what, right, um, Yorba ben Abad, what he should have done, because that he should have been afraid of the malchut, of the king, so he should have first gone to the side and take off his children, not in front of the king. ולחלות שלא בפניו, and to take it off, in, not in front of him. עד כאן, וכתב עוד את טעמה מפני שהוא Megale Harosh, there's also another problem, he says. Uh, when you take off your tefillin in front of your rabbi, you're, you're uh, exposing your head right, with, with no covering. Uh, that's also you're disgracing the king like that. The king, right? Shlomo Melech was the king. So he disgraced him like that by uncovering his head. Uh, also, that's also another problem. Um, says Maria Buhab, מזה אתה נראה שאמור בשימוש הרבה, for this reason, it says in שימוש הרבה, שהתלמיד עושה חוצפה כשמגלה ראשו, so it's a חוצפה for תלמיד, for student, disciple, to expose his head in front of his rabbi. אבל אין מתיישב לי, but it says still I have an issue with this, שאמור עד שיחלות צרבו, that it says right that until he, the rabbi takes it off. So he says, nevertheless, before that, there is a arrogance here that you're taking off your film before he took it off. If that's the reason, maybe there's also another, another reason they were, they were concerned about this. That he's, when a person uh, does this, you know, in front of his rabbi, taking off the film, Uh, it's like he's removing the yoke of heaven from upon himself. And you can't do this in front of your rabbi, right? It's like, you know, in other words, when you take off the tefillin, you're dis- disconnecting from Hashem. And you shouldn't disconnect from Hashem when you're, when you're with your rabbi. <laughs> it's not respectful. That's what he says. Until his rabbi does so. Because rabbi is doing also, also that, fine, that's no problem, right? According to this opinion. ועוד שיש בזה כמורה הלכה בפני רבו. Also it says, it's like considered to be like you're passing הלכה in front of your rabbi. So what does that mean? כשחולץ מורה, because when he takes off his tefillin, he's passing, שהגיע הזמן שאינו חייב בהם. That now the time came that he's not obligated in tefillin. ואין ראוי לעשות כן, not proper to do that. Even though it's not really, he's not really passing הלכה, but it's like as if, you know, as if. אלא בהוראת רבו, Unless his rabbi tells him to do so, I kind of know. When he tam shanish katab eno asur, according to the second reason, it says that it's only forbidden. Ela kishcholetz samuch ishket rachama. He takes it off uh, close to the sunset. Shenirek kemorek she. It's like he's passing. It seems like he's passing. She kvar giyaz man achalitzat tefillin because the time of taking off tefillin has already come. Umi uh, uleinian maase, right? Uh, but it says practically speaking, though, yesh lachush ledibe Rashi. We should be uh, concerned with Rashi. So what does that mean? That a person shouldn't take off his tefillin at all in front of his rabbi uh, because, of the, because of the reason that Rashi brought. Amar Rabba, lo kasher l'anuch et tefillin, ela man dekare. And as we said, right, that said there also, that only a person should... Uh, one second. Sorry, I lost the place, one second. 
Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. So as we said, right, that um, <clears throat> we already mentioned in the tour that there's an opinion like this, that a person, you know, who doesn't uh, learn Torah at all, shouldn't put the in at all, doesn't read Torah. It's also about down Shimu Shara this whole thing says, Maram Bet Yosef, Katur Besefer Atuma, it says in the Tuma, <laughs> but, but Talmud Shalano, but it says in our Talmud, Lomatsinu calls that we don't find all this, these these things. Uh right, and therefore that's not the halakha. El Adraba, it's just the opposite. The Perk Lulava Gazul. It says over there in Lulava Gazul, men betamud aul alif in sukkah, Krasin and Katan Hayodir Shmot Finin, that a katan, a, a child who knows how to guard its guard is filling. Avivo Lokiach Lot Finin. The father is also already obligated to bind Finin. Right? This is how we pass him, right? The Stradim. As we mentioned yesterday, right? The Sfarim, we train the son, we do chinuch with the, with the son, with Tfilin. So once he knows how to guard it, uh, you should buy him a Tfilin and practice with it. So he practices with it. Uh, not like the Ashkenazim that they buy it right before Bar Mitzvah, you know? Uh, that's what they do, as we mentioned yesterday. So, uh, right, as we said, Ve'afal grab the lo lamad me Mishnah, and even though uh, he didn't learn Mishnah yet, the Chen Katu Vatam, it's also written over there, if you wrote on Gvil, it's okay. It says not so, because it says in the Perk Shabbat, I said I'm bad. Parich Talmuda de Tfinin, a Gvil, Mikatvina, Ben Smokalem, Bemakom, which is a Mud Shalano, Kolekalem. So he says the rule is like this that we don't rely on Shimu Sharaba, which is a Midrash, as we said, when the Talmud is, is saying differently, you know? We pass like the Talmud always. So if there's a Machloket between them, we go like the Talmud. So therefore, here also, we don't pass in like the Shimu Sharaba. So what does that mean? That you don't have to have some kind of a minimum requirement of learning Torah in order to put tefillin. Everybody's obligated to tefillin, no matter what. Whether he learns Torah, he doesn't learn Torah, everybody's obligated. That's what we're trying to say. Okay, good. So then he goes on. Uh, the name is Rabbi. That was the name of Rabbi. You shouldn't put Tfilin unless you're reading Torah. So we don't find Talmud, as we said, right? But also, the one who says, uh, Even a Tfilin that we don't have to read in order to get to the Torah, it says that the Tfilin is not like that. It says that the Tfilin is not like that. Right. Uh, so everybody knows how to guard Tfilin, as always has to be trained for Tfilin. This is what it means to say this Talmud. It says like this: It says like this. 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 It says like Tamania Betve Kemo Anan Matnitin Teresa Metivta Beokatin Akanashano, the Rabbeno Shikatab Dibe Shimusharaba. He says, but so then why did Rabbeno the tour bring the Shimusharaba? If that's the case, that we don't pass him like that. So why did he bring it? So if Shah the Sphere lay the Shen Kushia, Mekatan the Odea Lishmot Finin. Maybe he holds that there's no, there's no difficulty from that Gemara that we brought. The child knows how to guard his feeling. Father has to buy him one. Uh, uh, so it says, uh, That's, it could be that that's talking about a child who already knows how to learn. But if he doesn't know how to learn, then we don't buy him Tfilin. Alternatively, we're talking about the issue of putting it all day. That's, that's the issue that he's talking about. In other words, you shouldn't put it all day unless you have some um, portion in Torah study. You're not on the level to put it all day. That's what he's trying to say. It could be, by the way. That's, that's, very, that's very good. 
אדם קיים היום ראה לילד משום של אבא, נופק לולה וגזול הילד לעניין הנחת בשעת קריאת שמע תפילין. And the Gemara is talking about just putting it for prayers, for קריאת שמע, so it's talking about two different things. ותפילין, אוקיי, בלבד, אבל כל הפוסקים השמיטו דברי על השימוש של אבא בזה. But it says all the פוסקים didn't bring the שימוש של אבא. So what is that? We don't, we don't פוסק like this. So the truth is, right, that everybody is obligated to put תפילין, whether you are uh, right to learn it or not learn it, or you learn, you don't learn, you still have to put תפילין anyway, what difference does it make? That's the halacha. Okay, good. Let's see the uh, Shulchan Ruch on that. You know, Alex? So, says Shulchan Ruch, lo yachalos tefillin b'fnei rabbo. A person is not allowed to take off his tefillin in front of his Rebbe. Ela yifnei l'tzad acher b'fnei emato. So, what should he do? Go turn to the other side, right? And because, because uh, you should be afraid of him to do that. Like, b'yachalot shelo b'fanab. Don't take off your tefillin in front of your rabbi. So, as we said, right, this is the halakha. Uh, okay, I guess that's pretty clear. If you have any questions, let me know. You bet. Okay. Uh, oh, so now we have another halakha. This is the last halakha of this chapter, I think. I do have a question. Sure. When it comes to the tefillin, if um, father and child... And the father is a rabbi. Yes. Does he have to also um, honor this uh, halakha that he should not take it in front of his, well, not that the parent is the rabbi, but since the father is a rabbi, she, he, should, me, he should honor this request also, no? Not to take the... Of course, yeah, of course. yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Okay, thank if you. His, if, if, if his father is his rabbi, yeah. Only if his father is his rabbi, yeah? Uh, otherwise, what? Otherwise, if that's not his rabbi, but the father is a rabbi, should he take his tefillin not in front of his father because of the, of yeah, the father? Yeah, you're asking, you're asking a good question there. Uh, mm -hmm. In other words, the question is, does this uh, halakha pertain to honoring parents or not? Yes. Or does Thank it pertain you. only to somebody who's your rabbi? Correct. So the truth is that we don't find this halakha in the laws of honoring parents, only with, with only with your rabbi. We don't find it with parents. Okay, thank you. So it has to be somebody who's your rabbi. And I think okay. the reason is because like this, you know, that, um, you know, you know what the, you know, sages say like this, the sages, they say that you're, you're obligated to honor your rabbi more than your parents. You know why? Because your parents brought you to Olam Azet, to do this world. And your, your rabbi is bringing you to Olam Abba, to the mm -hmm. next world. You understand? So, yes, therefore, yeah. right, the rabbi, his role is, is on a higher level than your parents. He's bringing you to the world to come. So, what does that mean? Your spirituality comes from him. Uh, right? okay. So, therefore, regarding the spiritual concept of tefillin, you have to be careful with your rabbi. When it comes to your parents, you know, it's not really a spiritual issue there. It's more like, you know, you have to honor him because he brought you to this world you know, okay. it's not a spiritual so much issue there. So okay. therefore, it's not relevant to, you know, the issue of tefillin with your, with your father. Thank you. Probably that's what it is, okay? I'm just giving you an ad hoc answer, but I think that's correct. Okay, thank okay. you very much. <laughs> it does require some research, these things, you know, a little bit, but I think that's, that's pretty much the story. Okay, so anyway, right, uh, we have one more halakha here. It says, Natur, Hayat Sarikh Rit Tefillin Um Zuzza. So it says, if you... Um, uh, if you need tefillin and mezuzah, you can't buy both of them, right? You can't afford it, right? Poor guy, right? You can't afford it. Tefillin, uh, me. So what comes first? Tefillin or mezuzah? So tefillin comes first, he says, right? If a person can't afford it, as a matter of priority, tefillin comes first. By the way, why is that? I mean, you could just guess, right? Right off the bat, you can guess. But the tefillin is on your body, you know, and the mezuzah is, is not on your body. So it's more directly, you know, connected to you. You know what I mean? The tefillin is on the house. But the, the, the I'm sorry, the, the, the mezuzah is on the house, but the tefillin is directly on your body. So it's more, it's more important. It's more, it's more relevant. It's more, it's more crucial for you. That's probably the reason. Let's see what Yosef, see what he says about that. Uh, so it says, um, it says, in the end of Megillah, it says, 
if they go Shmuel the Rab, the Rab Huna, they argue these two rabbis, the the Milta, regarding this issue, that I got the Amin and Hatam, and even though we say over there Matnita Messiah the Shmuel, but there is a brighter which can will support Shmuel. Yamar Mezuzah Kodemet Tzvinim. It says there that the Mezuzah is more important than Tzvinim. Uh, so it says Shebalu Osin Otan Mezuzah. Right, so it says like this, right? That if the tefillin is worn out, you're allowed to make it into a mezuzah. But if, it, if, it, if the mezuzah is worn out, you're not allowed to make it tefillin. So you see from there that apparently the mezuzah is higher, according to this opinion. And the Malin Bekodesh, because of the why? Because we have to go up in holiness and not go down. Uh, says the Rosh, the Mistabra de Lacha Kirabuna. So it says we should pass in the Kirabuna. That's how it's reasonable. Damat filin kodmin the mitzvah de gufe adif. Right, again, right? Exactly what we just said. It says the Rosh, the reason why filin is more important than mezuzah is because it's on your body, you know? So it's like, it's your, it's yourself, you know, your your essence, right? whatever. Right? That's the idea. <laughs> so he says that there's a question over here, right? Regarding how he learned this halakha. Because as we said, right, that there seems to be, um, a brighter which which supports Shmuel, but here we're not going like Shmuel, even though there's a brighter that supports him. How is that? Right? Uh, just by because of some logic, you know, some kind of a reasoning. Oh, yeah, it's on your body. Okay, it's on your body, but there's a brighter, right, which says otherwise. So then why do we go like the reasoning more than the support of the brighter? That's what he's asking. It says, uh, Lab Club, he says, Bishum de Albrighta Atya. So it says it's not really a big question. This question, you know why? Because this brayta we don't pass him like it. That's you know that's what we we learned in the, in the Talmud. It says over there we don't pass him like this brayta. Tanya ifcha sefer Torah because um, it says there's also um, there's another in the Gemara there's another brayta which says the opposite. It says there the sefer Torah shebala the sefer Torah she got worn out. We don't make mezuzah. Because we don't uh, go down in holiness. Right? So therefore, you see from this brayta that uh, the tefillin is more holy than the uh, the mezuzah. Just the opposite of the, that brayta. So therefore, right, we have a brayta on both sides. And this is the reason why we pass it like this one. Because it's more reasonable to say like that. Since the tefillin is on your body, and the, the mezuzah is only on your house. Okay, good. Let's see the uh, let's see the shulchan uh, So it says, "Hayat tzarich l'tfilin mezuzah." Any other masek they cannot them. If you need tfilin and mezuzah, and you can't afford both of them, which one comes first? Right, tfilin kodmin. Tfilin comes first, as we mentioned. Right, that's the halacha. Okay, very good. We got a little bit more here to do. In the bit yourself. The tour is finished already. We have more bit yourself. So it says in bit yourself like this. Uh, there's a gemara there, Mod Katan, Tetlav on Udalef, Menude um Sora, right? Ibailan, Mahen Betfinin. So what about the din? What's the din? A person who's excommunicated, right? Uh, uh, and Metzora uh, was like a leper. Right? The question is, are they are they uh, obligated to put Finin or allowed to put Finin? That was the question that they asked in Gema. The Lord Shita and says that wasn't answered this question in the Gemara. They were they didn't know for sure what Salacha. Katab Beitur Dasur. Wow. So it says Neitur. That a person who's excommunicated, right, not allowed to put tefillin. Uh, can you imagine? Right, uh, okay. That's probably as ex excommunicated by the court. Right. So the truth is, you know, regarding what you're asking, there's different ways of excommunication. The Rambam goes through all these. Um, Ways that a person can be excommunicated. Also, the Shulchan was brought down, but the Raman goes into more detail about excommunication. Mm -hmm. uh, so the truth is that 
sometimes excommunication is done by a bet din because the person didn't um, didn't uh, uh, didn't uh, obey the orders of the bet din. Mm-hmm. Uh, something you know that the bet din told him to do, he didn't obey. So sometimes the bet din sees it proper to excommunicate him because of that. That's one form of excommunication. Uh, but there's also um, another one, which is that a Tamil Chacham is allowed to excommunicate somebody because he disgraced him. You know, somebody disgraced him. Mm-hmm. Right, so you can imagine what's going on at the Georgian shul there. Right? I don't want to get too much into it, but right, there may be some people in trouble over there. <laughs> because... <laughs> Right. Well, you, right. you, so yeah. there's also the what about the 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 spiritual court up above? I, I've heard if you um if you're yeah. missing the Shema, the, the Zman of Shema, you're excommunicated for the day. Right, but that's talking about they they excommunicate you from heaven, you know. Right. It's a little bit different. That's a little bit different, right? It's more like it's a heavenly thing. <laughs> here, here we're talking about uh what here we're talking about uh you know that he was excommunicated by a rabbi or by a by a din. <laughs> I see. So th- it wouldn't apply in this case. You still be uh... no. That no. That we're not talking about that. We're not really talking about that. But uh, the truth is that, um, as we said, right, the, the Chacham can excommunicate from his for his honor because they disgraced him. Mm-hmm. So the truth is that um, it says in Shulchan Aruch like this. You know that the Chacham who does this depends on what happened, right? How it was done. If he was disgraced in private, right, by somebody. Yeah. So they say that the Chacham should, you know, better that he should forgive him, you know, it was something in private. But if it was in public, you know, in front of like a minyan, so then he has no choice. He has to excommunicate him. He has no choice. The rabbi. So he's not allowed to forgive him on that. Understand? So that's already a different story, right? Uh, but there's also a third form of excommunication, which is that even like a regular person, okay, is allowed to excommunicate somebody because you saw him that he's a sinner, you know? He saw him doing something really bad. So if he warned him and told him, listen, you're not, you're not allowed to do this. You know, you're doing, you're doing a very big sin there, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He's allowed to excommunicate him personally because of the sin that he's doing. Mm-hmm. So in other words, there's all kinds of rules about excommunication. There's all kinds of issues there, whatever. But so, uh, is, that, is that a specific procedure or is it just... Uh, Rambam, <laughs> the Rambam says basically, you know, that all he has to say is that this person is excommunicated. That's it. He's excommunicated. It's a very simple procedure. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it. There was something really funny. You know, one time I remember uh, that, uh, as I, I may have told you people, you know, the, the rabbi of Shalmanan, he uh, excommunicated somebody in front of us. He came especially to the, to the yeshiva, the there was somebody who was giving him a hard time, you know, Doing doing all kinds of strange things with him, the rabbi warned him, you know, like to, to to lay off, you know, and he wouldn't lay off. He kept on doing it. So the rabbi came to the yeshiva and he sat there. We 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 were, we were in the middle of learning, you know, and just sat there, you know. And we said, like, "What's the rabbi doing here? Oh my God, you know." So he told us, he says, "I'm I'm I'm excommunicating this guy because he's you know he's he's harassing me, and I warned him to stop. He doesn't stop. Blah blah blah. So he excommunicated him right in front of us." Why? Why did he do this? Uh, because he wanted to show us the halacha. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> he taught us the halacha how to excommunicate somebody. <laughs> but I guess also the reason was because he wanted to be publicized, you know. So he did it in the public, you know. Right. Well, yeah. So whatever. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he did that, but there was also a, there was also another uh, story that I heard from his son. It's like Yosef, that one time the rabbi was, uh, when he was chief rabbi, he was giving a lecture in the um, in a great synagogue in Tel Aviv, something like that, whatever. You know? So I think it was Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, whatever it was. And anyway, he was there giving a lecture, and some people went up to the, you know, Ezrat Nashim, you know, to the top, you know, the women's section. And they started, like, disgracing him, you know, like, making, mocking him in public, you know. So he looked up to the Ezrat Nashim, he looks up there, the balcony, you know, and he stops the lecture for a second. He says, He excommunicated them right on the spot. So what happened was that this guy who got excommunicated, he started to worry a little bit, you know. He says, oh my God, you know, this rabbi excommunicated me. So what happened was he went to some chachamim, you know, and they asked him, he said, you know, am I in trouble? Like, you know, this rabbi excommunicated me. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
what should I do, you know? So a lot of the rabbis told him, he says, don't worry, it doesn't take effect, no, nothing. Don't worry about it, right? So what happened was that uh, he didn't do nothing, you know, he didn't apologize to the rabbi, nothing. So what happened was that a few years later, you know, he got married, whatever, and he couldn't have children, you know? So then he realized, you know, that he's not having children because, you know, probably because the rabbi excommunicated him. <laughs> right. So what happened was he started to have feelings of guilt about that. And he, uh, so he, he he came to some, you know, the rabbi's people, you know, and he told them, he says, I want to go and apologize to the rabbi. You know, he says, that, that day that I, I mocked him in the synagogue, right, whatever. So he says, I want to go apologize to him. So they let him in, you know. So the, he, go, he goes and comes into the rabbi, you know, and, the, and he tells the rabbi, he says, you remember me? He says, I was the one who mocked you in the synagogue over there. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, okay. <laughs> So the rabbi told him, he says, Oh, you're the one. He says, Oh, I see. Oh, okay. He says, now, yeah, I want to apologize now. I want to see, you know, I want to apologize. So he says, I haven't been able to have children. I know I've got a big problem, blah, blah, blah. So the rabbi told him, he says, Okay, he says, you know what? He says, sit on the floor for like a little while, like your Avel, you know. He says, so he let him sit on the floor for a little while. He told him, he says, You promise me you're never gonna do it again, like something like this. And he says, you know, what you did it was very, very, very severe. So he promised him, you know, and then he forgave him the rabbi. And uh, then he had children, by the question afterwards, you know, he had children. Uh, so, yeah. There was also another interesting case that uh, I, I heard about, which was that, uh, you know, there's this guy, Arya Derry, you know, who's like a politician over there in Israel, minister, you know, whatever. So he's from Shas, you know, from the rabbi's party. Oriental. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so getting back to what we said, right? So what happened was that uh, this Ayyadari, he got on the news, you know, some like local news, whatever, and they interviewed him, whatever. So he gets on the news and he tells everybody, you know, in front of, in front of the camera that, uh, you know, Baba Elazar, you know, who was the son of Baba Sali, he tells everybody that the guy's like a rich man, very wealthy, you know, he has like a half a billion dollars uh, in his bank account. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right, so this rabbi got really angry at him. You know, says, "What are you like telling people I have a half a billion dollars?" You know, like, are you trying to get me in, tr in trouble with the authorities? <laughs> so what happened was he, he excommunicated him because of that. You know, because <laughs> he told him, he told him, he says, "You you 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 got me into trouble." You know, now who knows what's going to be? I may get into trouble with the authorities, tax you know, tax collectors, this and that. So the, 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 you know, they say I heard. I, I don't know if this is true, but I heard that the, the story came to the rabbi Marav He was still alive at that time. So they told him about what happened, you know, they, they, he excommunicated Arya Deri. So he told this rabbi, you know, the rabbi, he told him, he said, uh, what you did was not correct. He says, you can't excommunicate somebody for 